I'm speaking this afternoon with Yuri Andrukhovic, one of Ukraine's most important writers. Um, he is a novelist, a poet, an essayist, widely translated throughout the world. And he's speaking to us from Ivano Frankivs. Yuri, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Askold, for your invitation. And uh, uh, good evening from Ivano Frankivsk. Um, Yuri, you and I met in 1990. Um, you had just published your first book. Um, it was a series of stories based on your experience in the Afghan war, as I remember. I wonder if you could just say a few words about the beginning of your um, literary career. Um, well, um, I started writing poetry uh, by my 16, 17, and uh, I was then uh, at a school, and so it was uh, my uh, secret thing that uh, I do something what, what is uh, quite uh, unusual. Uh, I, I write poems, uh, so I, I uh, didn't want to show them to some other person uh, until I uh, absolved my school and I started studying in Lviv. It was a printing institute and I studied journalism there and I met some other students who wrote the poems too. So I decided now it's the moment uh, I can show them what I write. And it was a good start because uh, they liked my poems, so I was somehow encouraged uh, to, to do it further. And then I met uh, a very important person uh, for my uh, writer's career, Mikola Repchuk. He was then 28 or 29 years old, and he was a very, uh, he was already a very famous. Uh, literary observer, literary critic, and uh, he liked my poems very much. And he um, he was somebody who persuaded me uh, to publish them because I was very skeptical about the possibilities to publish my poems in uh, in then uh, Soviet uh, periodics. Uh, I, I didn't want to go to some uh, literary magazine, to, to some newspaper, to propose my poems for some publication. But Nicola organized uh, a few of, of publications for me, and uh, he persuaded me it's not impossible to publish some uh, some, some poems which are. Uh, not uh, not Soviet, not uh, ideological ones. So um, it was my my first experience to see my own text uh, published uh, in some literary magazine called Shovtin. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah. yeah, it it was then uh, the name of in in nineteen. 82, my first publication, and it was the name uh, of this magazine because uh, it was renamed uh, in the later years, and uh, it became uh, Zin. Oh, right. It was the, 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 the uh, later name of this uh, Jolte. Right. Mm, and so as I had to uh, to to go to uh, a military service uh, to the Red Army, uh, it was a year later after this my first publication. Uh, I had this uh, this small uh, privilege. I, I would say my inner privilege. It was just uh, uh, my my uh, inner. Uh, uh, so to speak, knowledge that I am somebody 
who writes poems. I'm not just uh, one of the soldiers here. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have this kind of, uh, of secret, of my personal secret. I was in, in the army uh, one and a half a year. Uh, then, and then, uh, as I was back, Mikola uh, helped a lot with my uh, first collection of poems. And it has been published in 1985. Mm-hmm. So after this uh, moment, I can say uh, since 1985, I'm a, a somehow professional in literature because uh, I got my, my first collection of poems, uh, which was quite successful. Uh, it, it got very good reviews and articles. My name uh, could be seen among the other names of poets of uh, our generation. It was a time as uh, the notion came within the Satniki, so the, the generation of poets from 80s. It was a time of our debuts. And uh, the second, or maybe the very first uh, important uh, circumstance uh, in the same year 85 um, we with my friends uh, Alexander Girvanets and Viktor Neborak uh, we grounded grounded our uh, our poetic performance group uh, which we called Bubabu what does Bubabu stand for? Yeah, Bubabu, Burlesque Palahan Bufonada. As I recall, there was a famous performance called Chrysler Imperial. Yes, it is, I would say, it, it is uh, the period of uh, uh, of high Bubabismus, blossoming <laughs> Bubabismus, because uh, we should speak about uh, much later times. The, the censorship, which was uh, very strong, and uh, I would say, which uh, was decisive at the time as it started in '85, and uh, on the beginning uh, of our time of, of uh, our bubabism. Bubabism. <laughs> uh, there was no possibility to openly to publish uh, some of our poems uh, in, in some uh, official uh, uh, media. But 92, it is absolutely different situation. You can do what you want. There is a uh, uh, absolute freedom of speech and there is an absolute freedom of self-realization and of some uh, uh, for, for each uh, for each artistic ambition for each uh, artistic uh, ability mm-hmm. and uh, it, it was actually I would say, uh, it was more pluralistic and more tolerant than even today. Hmm, really? Yes, we, we have more conservative uh, situation now. Why? I, I don't. I don't mean uh, the, the war situation now, but uh, I would say uh, uh, we we have uh, more conservatism. Uh, concerning the culture and uh, literature uh, in our time, uh, comparing to the beginning of a uh, new Ukrainian state. So I mean the beginning of 90s. Do you think of this as the kind of natural systole, diastole movement back and forth that yeah. happens traditionally? Because, you know, for instance, you will have the Dadaists and the Surrealists, and then mm-hmm. you have a return to more conventional... Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. This is the same. This is the same. This is analogy, I would say, not the same because there is no 
yeah. uh, two different cultural yeah. situations which are the same. Right. Uh, but, but it is a kind of analogy. Uh, I, I call all the time, so I, I mean uh, the end of 80s and the beginning of 90s. I call the time uh, a very special time in Ukraine as a festival age. Yes. So it, it the festival age uh, could be characterized by uh, as, as a huge uh, social political break, but it is also, of course, the break in mentality, the break in the consciousness, and it was uh, kind of um, kind of uh, apogeum, apogeum, apogee. Yes, apogee. Apogee yeah. of um, mm, uh, uh, of openness, yeah. openness to everything, and uh, it is then it is slowly, slowly ending uh, till the end of uh, till the middle of nineties. I, I think it, it has also some political reasons because uh, since 94, 95, uh, there is uh, the beginning of oligarchization of Ukraine. Mm. So uh, the big money comes into uh, action. It is the money of, uh, of big oligarchs and they, uh, so to speak, they, they, they um, order the menus for cultural uh, oh. events. Um, but it was the, the golden time was, uh, so maybe it begins in 80, 87, 88, and it ends 93, 94. And then we have this period of... Uh, uh, dominating of uh, Russian culture, pop culture, Russian pop culture, mm -hmm. Russiska Popsa, mm -hmm. uh, TV series from Russia, uh, uh, Russian pop has... music everywhere. And you know, this agenda uh, has been a little bit stopped just. Uh, by Orange Revolution in 2004. Mm -hmm. Was it, I mean, again, that was because, as I understand it, uh, the decisions about kind of culture, publication, and finance were flowing out of Moscow rather than uh, locally. Um, and are you, were the oligarchs who were uh, becoming the guardians of culture, were they primarily in Russia? Or were they also in Ukraine? No, I mean now uh, our Ukrainian oligarchs, <laughs> but their cultural identity right. uh, is completely Russian. Right. So they just uh, made uh, their money in Ukraine, but they ordered for Ukrainian cultural space, they ordered Russian culture. And of course, it wasn't... Uh, the, the, uh, the kind of innovative of ambitious culture it was just uh, this uh, on 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 the level of the pop of yeah. some. and uh, the orange revolution was the first uh, stage of resistance uh, in that meaning or uh, the orange revolution is for me uh, first of all a huge cultural event and it is a um, it is a huge carnival. It, you, you can say it is the last uh, revolution uh, in the Eastern Europe uh, from the period of uh, 89. Then we had a kind of uh, cultural struggle, but uh, after the second Maidan, after 2014, we have something like um, a huge comeback of uh, of patriotic seriousness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why 
that's probably why I I, uh, I mentioned this event that, that we have more conservatism and uh, and less uh, carnivalism in our cultural discourse now. Well, you probably can't sustain that energy. That energy is also associated with youth, isn't it? There, it, it is the energy of beginnings, the energy of young people. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, and of course, of course. Who are the Who are the writers um, in the generation before yours who you found influential and who showed the way forward, if there were any? If we speak. Uh, about poets, I, I can mention uh, the dozens of names, uh, and uh, some of them were absolutely official. They were normally published in the Soviet time, uh, like uh, Dmitro Pavlichko, Ivan Drac, uh, Mykola Vinhranovsky. Uh, some of them, like Lina Kostenko, who was my favorite, actually, mm. in, uh, as I was uh, young. Uh, some of them, uh, like Lina Kostenko, they had problems with publishing, but uh, it, it was it was just periodically. But what uh, now? Why why would she have had trouble? Yes, because she she uh, she wrote in. Uh, uh, in unconventional way uh, in in the Soviet meaning, she did write about communist party, about Lenin, uh, and her attitude to the uh, language, uh, culture, uh, being Ukrainian uh, was always uh, quite. Uh, unappropriate uh, to, to the Soviet system. It was like a, a kind of, of uh, uh, heresy. Heresy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mentioned four um, figures, but of course uh, there was a large uh, community of underground poets. And they were most influential for us, for our generation. They, they were the ones uh, who also created some, uh, some uh, ethical pattern. Oh. Uh, the poets like Ihor Kalinets mm -hmm. uh, or Mykola Vorobyov, Vasil mm -hmm. Holoborodko. Uh, so some of them. Uh, belonged to the, the, the so-called uh, Kiev school of poets, and Igor Kalinets from Lviv. Mm, so ac actually, we we had, uh, I, I mean, our generation, or maybe uh, more concrete, I mean, our our group, mm -hmm. we Bubabists. Mm -hmm. uh, we had of, uh, a lot of Ukrainian poets uh, who uh, were, so to speak, uh, great authorities for us. Mm -hmm. And now I will mention Hritsko uh, Chubai, who was just a hero for us. Uh, th th those, uh, those who uh, have been mentioned before, they were, of course, very high respected poets. But Ritsko Shubai was the only one who was a real hero. Why? Uh, for, for his time, he, it was absolutely new uh, poetic language, what he has cultivated. Mm -hmm. His uh, experimental uh, poetry was, uh, could, could, be, could be written in uh, Poland, could be written in France, mm -hmm. could be written in Spain, or maybe in the United States. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of um, of contemporary uh, voice, uh, which which is uh, which is universal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, not constrained by the sort of social demands and expectations. Yes, it, it was always readable. Then. Yeah, but it was made in in a way like 
uh, it was made in a in universal way. Yeah. So um, were the other writers that you mentioned who were not the official sort of writers um, in KU, but were a little bit more underground, were their publications uh, published by in Samizdat's or were there <laughs> presses who were publishing them? Uh, yes. First of all, I met uh, the poems. I, I didn't meet uh, uh, themselves, but uh, the poems written by them uh, were in Samizdat, or if you prefer Ukrainian word Samvedal, mm -hmm. just uh, uh, typed Underground. On, on the typewriter. <laughs> and uh, the big uh, expert and uh, big uh, collector, or collectioner, collector. Yeah, collector. Uh, uh, collector of uh, all that underground poetry uh, was Mikola Revchuk. Oh. So uh, in, in his uh, house in Lviv, um, I was uh, quite, quite often as a guest there. Uh, I always got some, uh, some pack, some, some uh, stuff uh with uh, uh typewritings and uh he he should be then as some of of uh, the best best uh uh experts in uh what ukrainian underground literature literature of that time is so he could collect some anthologies mm -hmm. and he had everything in his house and he also had a lot of uh, books uh, which were mm, uh, partly prohibited or just uh, um, just uh, took out from uh, libraries from different ideological uh, reasons and his uh, library his private library uh, was absolutely huge so uh, his refrigerator, refrigerator, if you can it imagine, was full of books wow. and wow. manuscripts. Wow, I love uh, it. There was never some food <laughs> <laughs> in his uh, <laughs> flat, but uh, but refrigerator was, was full of, of the books. <laughs> so I, I got my first information about those people. Mm -hmm. I heard for the first time the name it's Kochubai mm -hmm. in his flat, in Nicola's flat. And then uh, I, uh, th then we had the situation uh, in, the, in the second half of 80s, uh, uh, some of, of those poets uh, have been published, officially published. So they, uh, the, the, the first, uh, uh, poetry books by uh, Vasily Volobrodko, Nikola Vorobyov, uh, Viktor Kordun. It was always a kind of sensation because they, they were legendary poets, legendary uh, men who uh, did some revolution in Ukrainian poetry, but, uh, but no, you can just go to the bookstore and, and buy it absolutely officially and openly. Uh, and uh, it was, of course, a uh, great experience. And yes, um, w was this the case across the country or was this more in view? Because I remember when I was in Kiev for the first time in 1990, it was still difficult to find Ukrainian books in bookstores. Uh, yeah. Um, Kiev, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But maybe you remember uh, there was the only bookstore, and uh, the name of this bookstore was Poesia uh -huh. in Kyiv. Uh, it is Maidan Nezaleznosti today. Mm -hmm. mm, but I think uh, the, the, this bookstore uh, has been closed uh, in the middle of 90s, exactly the, the, the time of oligarchization. Mm. But uh, in the second half of 80s, 
it was the place where you actually could buy each new uh, Ukrainian poetry book. And, uh, and a very, very new uh, phenomenon of that time, uh, the readings, right. the performances the made by poets yeah. since 1987, I think. Uh, I think it was the very the, fir the very first uh, live presentation mm -hmm. at that bookstore was by four uh, our friends from our generation, four poets uh, coming from this uh, group of metaphorists, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they were Vasil Harasimuk, uh, Ihor Remaruk. Wow. Uh, Ivan Malkovich mm -hmm. and somebody else, maybe, maybe, maybe Ihor Malenki or some some of them. Mm -hmm. So it was the very first reading, and uh, it turned out to be a quite popular thing because to this very first uh, reading, uh, maybe two hundred people come. Wow. came and it, it was of course uh, absolutely full uh, of people and it was sensation so you you could you could uh, observe then um, this uh, changing in mentality and it, it's, there, there is somebody which uh, uh, which is getting closer, 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 some, some new quality of uh, uh, social role of the poet. One of the things I think that we here in the United States are always very um, impressed by and also awed and puzzled by is the popularity of poetry readings. I don't know if they continue to be as popular as they were then, but I remember attending some of those readings in those early days and they were always, they were huge events, as you say, 200 people, more people than that. How do you explain um, the popularity of poetry, which is here considered a very private art uh, and pretty exclusive? Whereas in Ukraine, in my experience, it has been very widely embraced by a much bigger population. Uh, we were moving in the direction of this very private, uh, events uh, like uh, everywhere in normal countries, in Western countries, I mean. But uh, you always have some explosions of uh, some uh, uh, some manifestations of uh, boom, of poetic boom. Mm. You still have it in Ukraine, but you have to work on that. You you have to uh, uh, to do uh, some uh, um, big campaign to invite the people. You have to uh, join some stars, some right. poetic stars, musical stars. You have to connect it to some to some big events, to some festival. Like, for example, a uh, huge book fair in Kiev. Sure. Arsenal. Arsenal. Sure. And then you have there uh, some uh, poetic stage where you can listen to the poetry a uh, whole day, nonstop. And you see uh, there are some three or five person to some which which come to to, to a certain event, but uh, to the next event uh, there are again there are three hundred persons. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's uh, now uh, now what we have is a kind of diversity. Also, your uh, work as a novelist is widely uh, recognized and celebrated. So, uh, yeah, it was it was maybe because uh, because I reached uh, a certain age. <laughs> uh, I had a superstition in my youth that uh, one cannot be still a poet 
after he is 30. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I was 30 in 1990. Actually, as we met with you in Kyiv, mm -hmm. uh, I wrote at that time my very last poems oh. before the long, long, long pause. Actually, after our meeting uh, in uh, Kyiv at the festival Zlotyi Homin, I went back to Moscow because I, I've been studying there to that, in that time. And I started writing my first novel, mm. which was actually one of the of the main results of uh, of uh, my participation at our festival. Oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, recreation is the title, right. as you know. Yes. And uh, it is a very short novel, which. Uh, I, I could manage to write it, uh, you know, during of uh, during two weeks, something like this. Wow! But uh, it was a, a huge, huge joy to write it. I, I was like uh, all the time flying on my, uh, uh, upon my uh, inspiration desktop. on your inspiration. Yeah, and. And um, what I experienced then it was that the prose, prose is uh, as fascinating as the poetry. So um, let's fast forward uh, over the decades. We, you mentioned earlier the importance of Maidan in uh, reigniting a sense of uh, national urgency. And it seems to me that where we are today is directly related to that period, the kinds of um, uh, the, the war really in some ways began with Maidan. And I wonder if there's something that you could um, tell us about the tension that must have existed in the country to that exploded in Maidan and the kind of sort of social transformation that we all witnessed here in the kind of heightened national awareness of people insisting uh, independence and freedom. Uh, that seems like a radical transformation from the earlier Soviet period where people were willing to go along with things. The Orange Revolution again, because it was uh, the breaking experience uh, for Ukrainian society. It was something completely new that uh, a typical post-Soviet society turned out to be much more complicated. Uh, striving uh, to be free, to live in a democratic country and uh, to have the possibility to join uh, the Western democratic world. Mm -hmm. So it was the, the first successful experience in our newest history. Mm -hmm. And uh, nearly 10 years later, in the, on the second Maidan, we had a much, much uh, harder situation with uh, uh, lot of blood with death of protesters, huge, huge violence uh, from the side of the regime. But we won for, for the second time, even then, even in that situation. So it was, you know, it was what is always uh, typical for Ukraine. Ukraine is surprising to give own life uh, for that idea for idea of uh, Ukraine in Europe. Ukraine belongs to Europe. And it wasn't an abstract idea because no, no, nobody will die for some abstract. It's just because uh, Ukrainians are Ukrainians. They want to be uh, free and they want to decide about themselves. And it's a very uh, saying, uh, detail that uh, 
we have 30 years of independence and uh, we have already the sixth president of the country. You can compare it with the other post-Soviet countries and you always see just uh, kind of dictatorships there. Mm -hmm. But Ukrainians uh, don't want to, to tolerate any dictatorship, any authoritarianism, authoritarianism. And so it's uh, something, uh, this uh, democracy is a very important part of Ukrainian identity. Mm. It, it has uh, the very deep historical roots, but I'm not historian, I cannot do some, uh, some, some uh, lecture about it. But uh, the war we have now is the next stage of this process. Mm. Because in each of, this, of these cases, uh, there is one and the same person behind. Uh, I mean the Russian president, who always tries to break Ukraine. Oh, he always tries to uh, to uh, annihilate us, to conquer us. And he didn't understand by now that this is the country where he is always beaten. He is always defeated here. He should avoid Ukraine in any way to, to be uh, as far as he can from Ukraine. But he didn't understand it by now. That's why Ukraine is now uh, the country uh, which means also his end, his political end and his physical end, I, I hope very much. And so uh, it was, of course, uh, uh, very uh, unjust, injustice, mm -hmm. justice, unjust. Yes, it's uh, Ukraine uh, was very underrated, and uh, you mentioned this uh, evaluations that uh, in case of the of this war. Uh, it is the question of a few hours or uh, maximally a few days and then there will be no Ukraine anymore. Uh, but today is the 51st day and, uh, of, of, of the war and Ukrainians are really successful in their resistance. And uh, I hope I hope that, that this is again, it, it will be a very, very uh, tragical, it will be a very uh, hard story, uh, but uh, be the happy end. Absolutely. Could you just tell us how your own life has changed? My profession now is being public pers person. And sometimes I have to do it uh, on the same time in three or four languages. Yeah. Uh, so it demands on a special concentration. Sure. And, uh, and my writing demands on its special concentration sure. because uh, I always was uh, trying to uh, to reach uh, my own uh, highest level of uh, stylistics. It is not a time I can I can elaborate each of my phrases and sentences mm. uh, to, uh, to 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 find my final perfectness in that. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I, I I hope very much that. Uh, I will be able to be back to to my uh, to my next book, which I have just started. Uh, I finished the first chapter of that novel um, two weeks before wow. the war. Mm -hmm. I was expecting this invasion. You were since since November. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. But so uh, that's why I tried to to write, uh, to start my next book uh, with, uh, with an idea. It, it uh, could be a novel, but it 
also can be as a collection of the short stories. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the very first of, of short stories is already uh, finished. Так само я працював над повістю і нічого тепер не можу сконцентрувати ще в що тепер я тільки публісері і і публіцистика. So, дякую, що ти um, знавасор um, знайшов час ще, ще, ще далі, далі бути таким public persona, public intellectual. Знаєш, хвили, хвилину тепер то від всіх вимагає і сподіваюся, що цей час скоро закінчиться і мир вернеться і Україна всіх переможе і з цього часу почнеться новий етап в Україні і, і, і в, ті, в світ і в пошані, який світ буде показувати Україні і українській культурі. Так, так. Я дуже цього сподіваюся, так. Я, я хотів би, щоб так було. За щось, за щось вже це, це, ці люди гинуть, за щось це, ця, ця кров і ці злочини, це, це щось мусить, космос мусить якось це вибалансовувати. Так, 